Sup? It's my new intro. I'm just going to say that every week. Sup? I'm trying to be down with the kids. <clears throat> know what the kids say nowadays? Sup? My nephew says bruh nonstop. I have something very important to discuss right off the bat. <clears throat> Sup? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right off the bat, uh, in regards to my last text, do you remember that? Uh, no one else is going to know what we're talking about. We don't have to mention names, but do you remember that picture that I sent you? Oh, yeah. Did you know that was from her? Yes. Oh, I did tell you that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I th I, okay, I didn't, I didn't know if I told you where I had gotten it from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, had to get that out of the way. Uh, so he, here's the only reason why I brought up your throw up bowl. <laughs> because number one, I had never heard of such a, I've never even seen that. I've never even heard that term. I didn't know people had that. Yeah. And when I saw the bowl, I was like, that's not deep. That's not deep enough. It looks like it has a lot of splatter ability and could get all over the place as opposed to a, a trash can. So yeah. explain the bowl to me. I didn't know what it was. Okay. I mean, my mom always gave us a bowl when we were younger, just so like if we didn't have time to like run to the bathroom or something like, or we used it a lot in the car, like if we were sick in the car or something like that. So I've always just used one and it makes me feel better. <laughs> you haven't used a, you've never used a, like a plastic trash can that's a little deeper? No, they smell. Well, won't a bowl, bowl smell? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's more open? Yeah. And like you use a trash can for trash. Like this bowl is just to throw up in. <laughs> but what, what about the splatter ability that I taught? Like, isn't it going out the sides because it didn't look deep enough? No, it's it's deep. It's big. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That was all I needed to know about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone's like, what about a bucket? I mean, I guess I could use a bucket. I don't know. <laughs> do you know do you know what uh what food caused it? Do you know what you guys ate that No, so apparently in New York the norovirus is going around right now. So we're thinking what's, that maybe what's the norovirus? Steve, a norovirus, it's just a stomach bug. Oh stomach bug. So it, it's very contagious. Um, we're thinking maybe he got it from like a salad or maybe we just didn't clean our hands properly. Like whenever we got takeout or something, um, <laughs> he's gotten food poisoning from sandwiches or from um, <laughs> like questionable things he's eaten before. So we just thought it was food poisoning on yeah. Friday. Um, and so my sister was in town and I wanted to be able to see her. Um, and so we were for sure that it was just food poisoning. And then, um, on Sunday when she was here. So just a couple hours ago, we were informed, uh, by extra TV from extras, Billy Bush, that. Chris Harrison is going to do a sit down interview with Michael Strahan on GMA later this week. I'm assuming it's not coming tomorrow. So that probably means it's coming Thursday or Friday. Um, there was a report in OK Magazine earlier this week that Chris wanted to be on the After the Final Rose to get interviewed by Emmanuel. I don't, I, I, I don't see him doing that. I mean, now that we've heard the GMA thing, that's probably what the interview that he's going to get. But you know, when I texted it to you, I mean, I think what you said is probably true. Like, I think the fact that Chris is doing an interview with Chris, with Michael Strahan on GMA is the beginning of his apology tour yeah. and probably means he's not going to be done with this franchise, at least forever. I don't think, I still don't think he does Bachelorette. It's way too soon. Right. Probably not Paradise based on what some of the contestants have said, but now I think I can see him coming back uh, in September for Bachelor. That's yeah, my I feel like they would stay away from him for a while if they were planning on firing him. And so with them doing an interview with him, it does not seem like he will be. 
Yeah, right away, especially right away. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been waiting for him. I mean, I would have loved him him to say something just like the executive producers released their statement yesterday about Rachel Lindsay. Chris, you know, Rachel's been getting attacked for her interview with Chris, and the one guy who hasn't come out and spoken uh, um, in favor of Rachel is Chris, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, why can't he come out and say, hey, guys, she did nothing wrong in the interview. It was my idea. And I thought about this, and what, what do you think about people – like, it's, it's tough to know. I guess we're just projecting and just speculating here. But how many people behind the scenes that are texting Chris Harrison, people from the franchise, maybe friends, are like, hey, man, hang in there. Not a big deal. They're screwing you. Cancel culture this. Cancel culture that. You're getting hosed on this whole thing. You, you know, it sucks, man. How many do you think he's texting back? No, I screwed up. Don't say that to me. Or he's like, yeah, I know, it sucks. I got to ride this out. Like, what do you think he's texting back to people who are like, you did nothing wrong, man. Hang in there. I mean, I, I doubt he's telling them what he said at first. Which means he's, that he's not sincere in, in, in any so, work that he's going to do. And you and I have talked about this um, in the past couple of weeks. I don't know if we've talked about it here on the live, but I actually think there's some moments in the past couple of weeks that he could have done some things to turn the public opinion on him for the better. Um, during the Texas crisis, I thought that would have been a great time for him to maybe lend his voice to getting Texas some relief since he's from Texas. And I thought that would have been um, a great way for him to actually use his platform for good. Um, I also thought whenever it came out that he was doing those cameos, if he would have taken the time to donate that money to maybe like the equal justice initiative or something like that, that, that would have looked good for him. Um, but we just, we haven't heard anything and it, it just would have been nice to see those actions from him. Um, I, I don't know why he hasn't done something like that in the past couple of weeks, especially when it would have been positive. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, I mean, I think I can pretty much guess what his interview with Michael on GMA this week is going to be. He's going to he's going to repeat that he's sorry. And there's a lot of stuff I need to learn about myself and a lot of stuff. But does he really believe it? Like, this is just, an, again, it's going to be more words. And we just don't know until he does more publicly other than say it which is no different than anybody else. Like I'm saying I'm doing better. I'm saying I'm doing the work. Uh, we have to see the work that he does uh, for, for us to believe that 49 years on this planet and the beliefs that he has come with and he did in that interview. Like, look, I, that's why if he was Bachelorette host, it'd be like, you didn't unlearn everything in a month. Bachelor of Paradise films in June. It's like, did you really unlearn it in three months? Probably not. I mean, even if he becomes the Bachelor host in September, did he unlearn it in eight months? No. But I think there is enough time where, like we're saying, I, I, I know people love to jump on this cancel culture thing, but we're not, we're not canceling Chris Harrison. If the show chooses to eliminate his job and fire him forever from the franchise, it's not because of cancel culture. It's because they decided to, to improve their show this is a step that they had to take. Have, it's not have you. Like, have you ever uttered the words cancel this person? Like, have you ever said that? No. Have we ever said that on this live? No. <laughs> but people seem to think, but people just assume because Wait. you called for Chris Harrison's job, that means we're canceling him. Wait, hold on. I did not date Chris Harrison while he was still married. <laughs> so what? That is like a really fucked up thing to say. And going on one date with someone as a double date is not dating. <laughs> not to mention there were other people there and nothing happened. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So also, you can talk shit about people you've dated before. That's literally what people do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like, that's what, is that what people are talking about? You dating? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I just, you know, the cancel culture thing is just not a, th we're, 
because people have said, I think Chris Harrison needs to be replaced from his job, it's coming from a much wider storyline of this show needs to go through change. If you keep the same production team and you keep the same host, what is changing about this show? I don't know. So he's the, first, he's the figurehead. He's the one guy that everybody looks to, and he's the one that had the giant mistake in the media and the giant screw-up, his 13-minute interview with Rachel Lindsay. If he's still the forefront of this franchise, then what changes are being made? And again, we're still, now we're, today is three weeks, today is the three-week anniversary of Chris Harrison and Rachel Lindsay's interview. The show has still not said anything. Um, they released their first statement yesterday in defense of Rachel, or which was, you know, just bogus. Um, I, we still don't know what chance, like, it, are they going, maybe they're just waiting. I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for the season to be over to be like, okay, we're starting up on Bachelorette soon. Here are the steps that we have implemented within our system to change how next season is going to be filmed versus our previous 41. Do I really think we're going to get that? Probably not. Were you were you on the were you on the clubhouse when the woman that Donna girl who spells her name Dana her husband who's a I think a cameraman on the show when he came on wasn't he saying they had done a lot behind the scenes like with the like the camera people and stuff like that yeah he said when he first joined ten years ago it was everybody on that show was white. And now he goes, you look around, there's black people, there's Mexican people, there's Indian people doing all sorts of jobs. At the time, I didn't realize this. <clears throat> and I guess I could have corrected him if I did, and I would have corrected him if I knew at the time. But here's the problem. If they're racially diverse behind the scenes and you've got a Mexican guy holding a boom mic and a black guy holding a camera and someone else going out to get food that's non-white, great. They've, 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 they've increased their diversity behind the scenes. However, the biggest issue that you can ask any BIPOC contestant about this show is when we sit down and do our ITMs, the person across from us and asking us questions is white. And I can report to you that everybody who asks questions as a, as a producer on that show is white. So great, you got a black cameraman and you got a black guy holding a boom mic. That doesn't, that's not gonna change the culture of the show because when Ivan or um, I'm just trying to think of black contentation sits down behind a camera and is speaking to somebody. The person they're talking to is white and they have nobody on set. That is a person of color that does interviews. And that's those interviews are the things that we see on television. Those are the things that create narratives of people's character. And that's exactly what we're talking about. So I wish I would have known that during the clubhouse because I would have asked him and said, okay, that's great. But, there's no producers that ask questions that are that are people of color, and yeah. that's that's what needs to change. And that's disappointing that, too because I kind of feel like producers were a little bit more diverse even on my season, which had no diversity in terms of the cast. Um, no. My uh, producer was Asian. Her name was Katie, and then another one that I was really good friends with was named Trafari, and she was a black woman. Um, so. That's weird that I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I, I was told and I spoke because I asked <clears throat> somewhat recent contestants who's doing the who's doing the ITMs and it's uh, I mean it's 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 Bennett it's Todd it's Megan it's uh, Julia LaPlaca it's uh, Adam Mansfield I mean that's five right there and they're all white um, I was told it's all white people so yeah. Um, so that's where the, that's where the biggest change needs to be made. And when they start filming in three weeks, do they have somebody, a person of color that has been added or has been maybe bumped up to a production level where they are conducting interviews? I don't know. And I don't think they would ever even announce that. We don't know anything about behind the scenes work. It's going to have to be, again, a contestant that speaks either off record or on record and says, I was on the show for f f six weeks and I never spoke to a person of color on set. On on in an on inter, on air interview, so I don't know. Um, um, but I, 